So I'm going to talk to you today about WASH and WASH in goal. So WASH stands for Water and Sanitation and Hygiene Promotion. But first of all, let me just ask you, hands up, uh, does any of you know anybody who's working in development or working with an aid organization? Okay, so we've one hand in the audience. Okay, very good. So the agenda, what will I talk about? I'll talk about Goal, the organization. I'll talk about wash, water, and sanitation, and hygiene promotion, and what it means. And then I'll talk about working within Goal in this area. So firstly about Goal. Goal founded in 1977, so the organization is very old. It's an NGO. You're going to see that quoted throughout the presentation. That means non-governmental organization, OK, or independent of government. Uh, we're an inter international humanitarian agency working for the poorest of the poor. They're the only people who really interest us. We're non-denominational, non-governmental, and non-political. Currently, we work in 12 countries. You will have seen us in the media in countries like Haiti during that big earthquake. Uh, at the moment, we're operational in Syria. That hasn't become public yet. And we'll be hearing a little bit about that in the media over the coming days, and maybe even this weekend we may have a piece in the media about what Goal is doing in Syria. Uh, we've spent about 900 million euros in development. Maybe that's the first important point for you guys. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a big perception out there that uh, development is, you know, like a missionary thing, or it's something, you know, that where people go off to Africa where the priests used to do it in the past, and we're helping out. It's not that, it's a business. There's a huge amount of money invested in development every year. A goal has, has spent almost a billion euros in its, in, since its founding uh, on development. So there's a lot of professionalism around it. It's not something you go and do for your summer or for a little while. More and more it's becoming a very professional industry. Uh, the focus uh, on, we focus on WASH, water and sanitation, hygiene promotion, on health, nutrition, infrastructure, livelihoods, or how people earn their living, child empowerment and protection. Uh, in the areas we work in are emergency, recovery, that's immediately after emergency, or the transition to development, and development. Where do we work? So it's, you're just going to see some slides popping up of the different countries around the world where we work. In front of you, you can see some of the kit that we use when we respond to emergencies. So we have a few radios, sat phones, GPS devices to identify where we are, because a lot of the places we work have very few roads, very, very inaccessible. We've got a, uh, a kit here for testing water in the field to check if it's contaminated. And we've got a mosquito net. Uh, their uh, mosquitoes uh, tra tra transfer uh, infection, and so it's one of the one of the big interventions that we would provide in an emergency. So as you can see, there we work in 12 countries around the world. Okay, water and sanitation and hygiene and, in, and hygiene in the sector emergencies. That's the critical intervention to ensure the affected population have access to life-saving services. Uh, in an emergency, the most important thing that we can provide is water, following that sanitation. Uh, food, people will survive for a period of time without food. They will not survive any length of time without clean water. It's a major challenge for us in an emergency. So it's the first priority is to get water to the people. In Haiti, that was the only priority on arriving on the ground was get water, then set up the supply of food to follow. And sanitation. People will die of uh, diseases that are associated with infection, and sanitation is a massive issue, uh, particularly in an emergency. Once we have this uh, population stabilized, then we focus on the transition, which is trying to get them to be responsible for their own water, sourcing it and uh, consuming it, and for their own sanitation and the management of it. And then we move into development, which is us not being part of the process and moving to a stage where communities take ownership and responsibility for their own supply, uh, chlorination if necessary, and management of their own sanitation if that's through toilets or latrines, which is a primitive toilet, etc. Uh, 
outputs often link to, to health, uh, uh, but other benefits include education and food security. What's that, what I'm really saying there is that uh, water sanitation hygiene promotion, WASH, as I'm going to call it from now on, is all about uh, people's complete environment. Uh, the education, we need to have WASH in education facilities. Uh, need, people need to be healthy to go to school. Education is the key to, to the success or the survival of developing countries, similarly for food security. We focus on communities, schools, and health institutions, okay? So we're not working particularly family on family. And the whole focus for us is not giving people stuff, it's about giving people the skills to help themselves, okay? Okay, you'll see a few examples here in the photographs of, uh, this is an emergency latrine facility, so it's got like 10 toilets. The focus there is on washing, hand washing. Once we give people a facility to go to the toilet, it's so important that they understand and take very seriously the whole issue of washing their hands after they go to the loo, washing their hands before they cook, and washing their hands all of the time, washing with soap and washing their hands properly. To you, that may sound simple, but it's the difference between life and death to people in the developing world where it's not easy to do that. There may not be water available around the toilet easily, so you can see here where we've um, put up a facility for where water can be transported to where the toilet is so people can wash their hands after they go to the loo. If they don't, if, for example, cholera, a, a deadly disease that's waterborne, uh, is present, they can, they can contaminate their food if they don't wash their hands. That can contaminate the rest of the family, and it spreads like wildfire. And there can be huge numbers die very quickly in a terrible way. Water supply. Water supply is about the sustainable access to safe uh, water supply. So there's a, vari a variety of means of achieving this, from hand dug wells to boreholes to surface water treatment and to rainwater. So some of the work that I've done over the years were in Honduras, we went up into the mountains, we identified a clean water source, and we designed a pipe network that would transport that water from the mountain down to the community, build a tank, uh, uh, let the water flow through, fill the tank, and people have access to safe drinking water. It's one of the most gratifying projects you can implement because instead of the people having to walk for two, three, four hours to get water and bring it back every day, and that means children and mothers principally, uh, they simply walk out one day after a six-month project. We turn on the taps and the water flows, and it's an amazing feeling for everybody. Um, also, in Uganda, in a conflict environment, we provided hand dug wells in and around the community where people could access safe drinking water. In that case, it was a conflict area where uh, um, the youth around your age uh, were being abducted from the village and taken out into the bush uh, by rebels. And so, to, to safeguard uh, the, the people of the village, we would provide wells close into the community where they didn't have to walk into the wilderness or into the bush and be at risk. And so that was that kind of an intervention. And the, the other intervention is in an emergency, trucking the water in. It's really expensive, but it's absolutely essential in, in post-emergency. Uh, access uh, often, often measured in terms of uh, time to water points. That's what I was explaining to you is how long does it take to get to the water point and to come back and that distance may increase as the dry season comes in. Uh, sustainability remains one of the biggest challenges in development. What I'm saying, talking about here is the transition from a community being completely reliant on us to being completely self-sufficient and there being absolutely no requirement for us. And the important point there is that there isn't a one solution for all cases. The solution is very much dependent on what part of the world we're working in, what the particular conditions are, is it conflict, is it not conflict, is the water contaminated, is it not contaminated, do we need to bring out some of this kit, test the water, have it treated, and so forth. And what we have to try and do is to, uh, is to set a model that will be appropriate to that community. Here you can see some photographs of 
the type of, of interventions we've got in the middle there, a mobile drilling rig, uh, and we're drilling a, a, a well, and then you can see the final product where people have access to drinking water.